Okay, got some flu. I carried from there and uh, oh, to the whole family. <laughs> <laughs> and it is really working the whole body mm -hmm. some timely basis also on a given day oh, okay, okay. Recovery. okay good okay so so are you developing the confidence in working out uh, anything any problem how to think about it in general everything is improving yes yes sir Okay, keep that as uh, as the the main learning thing. Okay, okay. It's the particular problem or the concept or the topic, like uh, anything, something. When we have to look into, or if we are interested to solve it, or even to understand, then how to have that full positive attitude, and uh, what I need to look into, what are all the things associated with that, how to interpret it. Even sometime like uh, talking to somebody, how to read between the lines, what they are really meaning, like that. In general, we should get okay. better and better with uh, everything what we are doing. Okay. 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 Don't ever think that uh, that 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 process is not that uh, we need to think about it. Like it should never appear. Like uh, uh, it is difficult or I don't know about this. Never ever have that uh, even the start process of the negative thought process. Okay. Okay. So it is not about uh, being greedy or something like that. It is about uh, having that good feel. Internally, we should have that energy. Like uh, we can, we are capable of doing anything. Nothing is impossible. So we will try. And when we try, we do our best to make it correct. That is the way we do everything. Okay. 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 Let me. So. So maybe you may be doing a lot of other things, uh, many concept and mass and physics uh, and everything. So uh, what you find it, I uh, mean, we need to discuss today, like uh, something is not uh, comparatively, not that confident, not that clear or something like that. Yeah, uh, one thing is there relations and functions in math, but then... Uh... Mm -hmm. uh, that is because they are asking to do like proof and not show an example and prove that whatever they are asking. Okay, one second. Let me get the whiteboard. Okay. Let me get a new whiteboard. Okay, and then I have to share it in. It's been quite a while I used uh, Zoom. Okay. Okay. okay, let me share this. Okay, can you see the whiteboard? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, let it be. So you were saying functions and uh, yeah. So uh, can you can you explain a bit more? Okay, uh, so like they're asking one second the sum which. Yeah, they told stuff as they classified it as uh, reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, so these are all the property of a function. Okay. So, okay, do you have the, I mean, the concept pages that you can take? Uh, uh, yes, uncle, I do. Yeah. Yes. Snapshot and uh, because I want yes. to see that uh, how much they are expecting the students to know about it. Okay. Work on that. Okay, just one minute. I'll just send the. Yeah. Because in pure mathematics, it is enough to learn about a, a function is uh, odd function or even function, or if it is a combination of odd and even kind of thing. But uh, yeah. Okay. The other property, what you are talking about, they are all part of uh, discrete mathematics, actually, not uh, okay. pure mathematics. 
but uh, maybe for some reason because the discrete mathematics is followed up from the probability and the statistics and then uh, it will still go on like how to deal with the data and everything okay so <clears throat> okay let me wait one second yeah Wait, I need, uh, one minute, Uncle. I'll just switch off. The yeah, yeah, yeah. Take, take your time. It's okay. Okay, let's put that in the white screen and then see. I'll send it till like the end of the first exercise. Okay. Yeah, so. Um, yes, sir. Why they are doing that even at the level 12 standard or something like that, I don't know. Because this has to be. Okay. Okay, so you send more. So there are so many of them. Okay, let me check where it goes. Until... As I said, it starts with the the yeah domain co domain. And then the set theory A, B, yeah. and the, what is the relationship connection between them? Uh, okay. Reflexive symmetry, transitive. Okay. Okay. Oof, 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 oof. Really, I don't know why they made the syllabus like all these things learning at the 12th standard. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then they go all the way to some exercise. And then, yeah, more exercise. Okay. Okay. What I do? Because these are all, I mean, the starting point of uh, discrete mathematics. Okay, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. And uh, mostly this is, uh, these are all the basics of the data analytics or the data science, uh, what people do when, when we are doing some kind of uh, uh, programming and the developing algorithm for the data. Okay. Okay. Okay, what I do, okay, I kill this. Okay, we don't, okay, let's uh, instead... I would uh, try to get some better, better material for you. Uh, once again, let me look for that. Okay. Mm, this is... Okay. Where I got to this one statistics. <laughs> Sorry. This is by the first year student in here in Exeter when he did that to me last year. Yes, I was using some materials for a student from yeah, titanium. Yes. 
and then yes sam yeah i remember him it is good mathematics yes okay okay and also he has in the close notes and notes oh, there are two of them okay both looks uh, same but one is with the proper numbers okay we are talking about the functions and then okay let's start from the functions and see how that thing goes okay because i hope that uh, you you know the 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 basic set theory okay 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 Because the notation and the understanding, everything is very important. So starting from there, if we go from there, it will be easier. Okay. Okay. So view full screen mode. Let that up. Let up. Okay. Okay. Let me. In the zoom, okay, let me share the PDF, okay, this one. Okay, I, I will send you these uh, materials the okay. slides and uh, also the notes uh, because we prepare it in a two format. One is for the lecture, like when, when we explain this kind of slides will be more useful. Okay. And for the students to read it as a notes, then it will be like a A4 sheet. Uh, continuously, it is like a textbook material. It will be the okay. same material, maybe with a bit uh, extra explanation and everything. Can you see the slide? Yes, sir. Okay. So this is actually, uh, before that, there are some slides as well. That is about the basic uh, set theory, probability and everything. And okay. This is, I think, the third one. It one This one, okay? Okay. Let's see. I mean, if you need... Even the basics for this, we can we can go back and look into them. Okay. Okay. So let's try to understand what is the requirement and the need for all these things and how this is going to be useful for us, where to apply and everything once we know these things. Okay. Okay. So for the function, okay, I mean, there are different explanation and a definition and a understanding we need to have. So let's start with the basic understanding. Function means... If you have a, a variable, it could be like we can we can immediately say that the variable is a x, okay, independent variable. Okay. Then yes. we understand that a good example is the time. Time is a very good independent variable and it will vary on its own. Like uh, we know what is the time now and after one second, it will be incremented by one amount. And then we know how it changes changes from one time to the other time and it is changing linearly, and we know everything about that. Do you get that? Yes, sir. So, that is a kind of one kind of variable, but sometimes it could be independent variable of any kind. It could be of even a data. Like, uh, for example, how much is the, the, the number of apples in a basket? Do you get that? It should be a data yes, by observation yes, yeah. or it could be the temperature of the earth, the planet earth. Do you get that? In a particular okay, yes, group or something yes. like that. So, so when we have a particular data or a, we can represent that as an independent variable. Do you get that? Okay. And some of them, they mo, mo, mean the, there are very rare commodities which are independent like uh, something like the time or something like that. But most of the other thing will be dependent on something. Okay. You understand that. Even the apple. Yeah. The number of apples will be varying with respect to time. Do you get that? On a, on a given okay. basket, like today morning, there are so many number of apple. And then because of some action, somebody may be adding the apple or somebody may be taking away the apple. So the number of apples may change. So it become a variable quantity. 
but that variable quantity may be dependent on something. So that kind of thing we call that as a function. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Okay. So how to quantify that? How to understand that? Let's take it as a, there is a squaring machine. What that is? Mathematically, we understand that this is a box where if you give a variable x, then it will give an output as a x squared. Makes sense okay. to you, right? Yes, sir. So this is the function. This is the job done by that box. That squaring machine will do the, will do the job. And okay. there is another example. is an adding machine. So if you give okay. two data, the x is one input and another y is another input, they are independent on their own. They have no connection between them, but they are same type. Then this adding machine will add them. Okay. Okay. So yes. the, the, the difference between the two first difference, can you can you tell me what is the difference between these two machines? A first one will square if a variable is added. Okay. Uh, a second one will add both the variables. Okay. So so before that, there is one more very important property that how many number of inputs this particular machines can take. Do you get that? Okay. Okay. So the first one is taking only one, one. input. Yeah. But the second one can take two inputs. Two. Okay. okay. So these yes. are all the things. And what that is doing with the input, what is happening compared to the output and everything, these are all the properties we will be looking after. Is that okay? Okay. Okay. So the the second machine, add machine, can also be written in this alternate version form. So this is also a block diagram where we can say that two inputs put it as a together as a x comma y. Okay. Because both of them are the same type. We cannot add them if they are different types. Do you get that? Okay. Yes. So there are two input x and y. It could be one is the x is the already number of apples available in a basket and y is the new number of apples we are adding or removing, then that x and y can be considered as both of them are of the type number of apples and this adding function machine will add them together. Is that okay? Okay. Yes. Sir. Okay. So now we are going for example. So this is written as the square, which is x becomes x square. Yes, sir. Okay. And the okay, and the property, the square of x, that is how we write it. Okay, square of x is actually equal to x square mathematically. And there, there are uh, do you know the the notations written for different kind of uh, numbers quantity? Yes, sir. Integers, natural numbers, yeah, yeah, yeah. Number, yes, yes. all these yes. things. So n is for what? Natural numbers. Okay, so in the square type. The input n is a natural number. The output will also be will be a natural number. Be a natural number. Yes. Yes. Yeah. How about r? R is for the real number. Okay. A real quantity will go as a real quantity in the squaring machine, squaring function. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. And then in the add the x comma y, put it inside that uh, the kind of bracket is is changed to output as x plus y or we can write it as add of x comma y is x plus y and in the add the property to now there are two input right so we need to write both the properties like if x is a natural number and y is also a natural number then the output will be a single output will be a natural number that is the notation we are writing here is okay okay n cross x is becoming a n and r cross a r is becoming a r make sense to you uh, yes sir okay okay so now go for a more uh, because the data can be of number data or it could be a uh, a, a name like it can okay. be quantitatively representing something so for example a capital could be a function so if you give the country name then the function will get the city name, the capital city name. Okay, yes. Sir. Okay, example is if you say France, country name is France means the Paris is the capital. Yeah, okay. Okay. yes. So the function mathematically, it can be written as capital of France is Paris. Okay. Equal to Paris. Okay, this is how the, the function. So what to be done on the input so that we can derive the output. That's the... Okay. And, and that gives what the function is doing that that define the function. Okay. Okay. And another one, 
reverse. The reverse is the alpha star goes to alpha star. What it is, is actually mean we, we will understand what it is. Let's say there is a word called stressed. Is that okay? Yes. Sir. That input, literally whatever the alpha letters in the arrangement, it will convert it into front to back. Okay. So stressed will become a desert. Okay. Sense to you. In okay, yes, I'm right. Both of them can be word, meaningful word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. to be in, uh, in most of the cases, okay? Okay, yes, sir. So, in mathematically, we can write that as reverse of stressed. Now, you see it is put inside the quotes because the, the letters are going to be string elements and it is going to convert to become a desserts as a string. You know what is a string and a character, all those things? No, no, no. Uh, okay, so you have not done any programming. No. Okay. Okay. So if, if if there are individual, I didn't take uh, computers, so yeah, I think yeah, that's so okay. They, yeah, that's yeah. okay. But but if you, if you take a a single character, okay. So la, la, let's say the English letters. There are twenty six of them. Each of them okay. are called a character. Is that okay? Okay. Okay. But using a character, we can combine them one after the other. Combination may give out a string. So, for example, here, stressed, S is a single character, T is a single character, like okay. that, so many characters. And if you arrange them in this order, that very first one is the S, followed by a T, followed by R. So, we call them as an array of characters. Okay. Array, you know what is an array, right? Yes, yes. Okay, like array a... is, yeah, one after the other, we arrange yeah. this and we call that is the first element, second element like that. Here, yes. characters are arranged as an array and the array of characters is called a string. Okay. Because one after the other, they are all stringed. Do you see that? Yes, sir. They are connected. That is what it is. So, the last example here is defeat is, reverse of defeat is also defeat. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay, so actually it has a property of a reflection. Do you get that? Mm, yeah. We, we will, Palin, we will, yeah. So we will, yeah. That, there is a word for that, as, as you said in English also. Yeah. Let's go further. Okay, so your function is a mapping which associates with the elements of one set of elements to other. What this means is the input will form one set and our output will form another set. Okay. So you know what is a set, right? Set is a definition. So group of group of elements. Elements. Uh, yeah. yeah. So that, that is what the set is. So the input could be a set and output could be a set. The function is going to map input to the output. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. So the first set is called the domain of the function and the second set is called the codomain. Okay. This also, you, I think you already studied. I think so. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Sir. This one, yes. So, so I mean... P people usually get confused with the one more word which is called the range. Range, yes. Okay, but be clear with that because when we do the discrete mathematics, mathematically the definition has to be understood in the way it is commonly known, not with the way we may have local understanding. Do you get that? Okay. Okay, so input and output, so whatever the, the first set, the input side set is called a domain of the function and the output side is called the codomain. Okay? okay, be clear with that. And the range will come into picture later because we may take only part of that domain, then that become a range. Okay? Yes. Okay, so we will see that later when it comes. We write F, F is the function, okay? Defined as the domain becomes a codomain to say that f is a function with the domain d and the codomain c. Makes sense to you, right? Yes, sir. Okay, d going to c, that d is the first letter for the domain and c is the first letter for the codomain. So, this function, the function type of uh, the f, so the image of the element x, which is the element of the domain, under the function f is denoted as f of x, thus f of x is an element of c. Is that okay? Okay. Yes, sir. So, we are, we know that the set of elements in the input side is called the domain, output side is called the codomain. So, if you take a one particular element which belongs to the domain, 
then the function f can act on us and if it is acting then we denote mathematically as a f of x and the output will be the f of x itself and that output will be it belongs to the codomain or it is the element of the codomain is that okay 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 so now let's start de dealing with the property of the function so the first the numer numerical example so first one is a linear function that we have okay. done a lot of things uh, in the pure mathematics but let's yeah, yeah. The, through the discrete mathematics linear functions are functions where f r goes to r that is a real quantity becoming a real quantity code the, so the code dom domain also is a real one and the codomain is also a real type defined by a rule of the form f of x is a times x plus b okay, okay. yes sir. so here the x is our domain belongs to the okay. domain and f of x belongs to the codomain but a and b are they are called constant parameters and they should belong to the the same real Do you get okay that? yes okay. so the graph of the linear function is always a straight line that also we know yes okay so ne next one is a quadratic functions which have the form f of x is ax square plus bx plus c where a, b, c are elements of R or constants, the graph of a quadratic function is a parabola. Okay, yes. So we are trying to understand the pure mathematical function and everything what we learned for a more abstract way, more generic way. Either it could be for the uh, numerical example and then later we will learn about uh, even the, it need not to be even a numerical data. It could be any um, qualitative data, name of a country, name of a person, all those things will come into picture. Okay. Yes. Okay. So polynomial function is the generalization of all this uh, form, linear, quadratic and everything. So any nth order polynomial function f of x can be written as a, a constant term plus a1x plus a2x square. It goes up to an x power n where a0 to an all those things are elements of the real numbers which are constant parameters. This is a polynomial of degree m. You know that, right? Okay, yes. And you, you have studied all the properties of that, how the graph will look when the n number is known and uh, how the how many number of turning points and how to find the maximum, minimum, all those things. You remember them? Using the yes, calculus sir. and uh, yeah. everything. Okay. Okay. So... There is another important function called the exponential functions, which is of the form a b power x. Is that okay? Here, okay, we, yeah. we, you need to make the big difference between the understanding between the polynomial. Polynomial is the domain element will be in the base and the power of that will be a numerical value, a integer value, which will be the power of the x. Do you get that? Okay, yes. That is that all those things are called the polynomial function. But when it comes to exponential function, because don't confuse that to the number 1 or 2 or whatever the n is in the power. It is a integer value which is the exponent power value of the input, the x element. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, so we don't call this as an exponent function. This is a polynomial. But okay. what is the polynomial? I mean, the exponential function. The exponential function is there will be a constant parameter. Then the power of the constant parameter will be our you know, coming from an element from the domain. Make sense to you? Okay. Yes, sir. X is sitting in the power of the b, and the whole thing can have a coefficient a. So the a and the b are totally constant parameters, which are elements of the real number on its own, but the input will be used as the exponent of the b and the whole thing can have a coefficient as a a. That is what the job of the function is. Okay. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Are you clear with that? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So then the inverse of the exponential function is the log function. But on its own, we can define that also as f of x is a log x to the base b and we know that y is actually the, we can write that y is actually equal to log b to the base x, which is also same as x is equal to b power y. Do you see how? Mm. The thing was yes, used? yes. Right. Okay. This is also okay. 
okay of particular importance of computer science is the relative rate of growth of these different kind of functions any exponential function overtakes any polynomial function which in turn overtakes any logarithmic function a polynomial function of higher degree overtakes any polynomial function of lower degree. So, okay. what this is, actually you studied the power series, right? Yes. Like even something like a e power x, you know the hmm. expansion of the infinite power series expansion of the e power x, right? No. e power x can be written as a one. Have you not studied that? No, no. It is x plus x square, x square by 1 factorial. I mean 1 plus x power 1 by 1 factorial plus x square by 2 factorial like that you are not studied? No, no. Oh, okay. Maybe it may be coming later in this year. But the thing is any, any function can be written in a in a Taylor series or a Maclaurin series, okay? Okay. So, time being, okay, okay. We, will, we will keep it as okay. such because we can we can say that if there is an exponential function that can be written as a infinite power series of polynomial function. Okay. Okay. Yes, uncle. Okay. Okay. So, that means the combination of the linear, quadratic, cubic, fourth order, fifth order, up to infinite power, all of them put together will be our exponential function. Okay. We know separately x power 1 is a linear function, x square is a quadratic, x cube is the cubic. Like that we can go up to infinite power, right? Yes, sir. If you add all of them put together, that can be represented as a single exponential function. Okay. Is that okay? Okay, okay, okay. So, if that is the case, then which is more powerful? The exponential function is the highest one. Do you get that? Yeah, yes, sir. Okay, so, that is what they are trying to say. One particular okay, important okay. exercise is that relative rate of growth of these different kinds of functions any exponential function overtake any polynomial function. Okay, yes, sir. Okay, so the polynomial fu function will be a lower. So a straight line will be growing from one value to the input other value in a slow rate, but the exponential function will grow very fast. Do you get that? Yes, sir. Okay, so the logarithmic one is much lower than the polynomial. Okay. Okay, so if you if you if you draw graph of all these three together in a in a graph then the logarithmic function will be much subtle do you get that it will, it okay, will yes. it for higher and higher value but the linear function or the parabola or something will be seen bit higher graphically it will be seen higher than the logarithmic function and exponential okay. function will be more bigger than that okay okay Okay. The partial and the total functions, these are all definitions we need to understand. In mathematics, we generally only consider total functions. That means, in mathematics, mean pure mathematics. That is what it means. Okay. okay. So, that is a total function. That means any function is, we cannot just separately uh, separate that is a linear part or a square part or something like that. Do you get that? Yes, sir. Okay. But where f of x is well defined for all elements of x of that domain. So, that means, meaning is, for f of x in a pure mathematics, that means for any x, the f of x is always defined. Okay. So, by the definition of f of x, if you know what is f of x, then if x is given, we can plug in the x into the function and the pure mathematical function will completely give an answer for us. Okay, yes. Because it is completely defined. We know what to do with that. Okay. But in computer science, that is in discrete mathematics, partial functions are also important. What is that? This is when f of x may not be defined for every element of the x of the domain D. Okay. Domain, domain D may have lot of values. Do you get that? Okay. It could have positive number, negative number, zero, and it can have even complex number or whatever it is. So, we know that the domain may have lot of x, but the function f of x, when... A x is taken from the domain and given to the function, 
that the function may not be defined for certain values of x. Do you get that? Okay. Okay. So that means the function is not fully defined. Then that function is not a total function. It's called a partial function. Okay. 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 I mean, I'm not giving you any example, but I'm just saying yeah, that yeah. the definition okay. may not be available. So we cannot get an answer for the function for those elements. Okay. Okay. Yes. Now there, there is an example. A function mother. Okay. So men goes to women is total because every man has a mother. Do you get that? Okay. Okay, okay. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Okay, fine. Yes, okay, sir. so the function is a mother. So if you give the input, the men will have a, 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 a mother who will be a woman. That is what the meaning here is. Okay. Okay. So okay. here, the function eldest sister. So if you, the function is a eldest sister. If you ask whether any men will have a output as a woman, whether there will be a eldest sister for all the men, may not be. Do you no, get no, yeah, yes. So this is a partial function. Yes, Uncle. Okay, understand. Do you, do you get that? Yes, sir. So the in both the cases, the total function and also partial function, two examples are here. Both of them having the domain as the men and the co-domain as the women. Okay. But the function is, the first one is a mother, second one is the elder sister. Both of okay. the mother, mother is also a woman and the elder sister is also a woman. But in the case of the first function, which is the mother function, the men will definitely every man will have a mother who will be a woman but in the second function which is the elder sister not every man will have a elder sister who will be a who is supposed to be a woman makes sense to you okay okay yes sir. okay so that most of the time these partial functions are all related to the qualitative kind of uh, data okay yes sir. okay property like uh, something like what what happened to the fruits, whether it is in a good quality or ripened or it is rotten or something like that. Do you get that? Okay. How to classify them, how to separate them, how to group them and everything, we may have partial functions. Okay. 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 So the function square. So this is a numerical function. Okay. So real quantity goes to a real quantity where x goes to x square is total because you take any x, we know how to find the x square, right? So it is a total function. Okay. So it is totally, for every x, it is defined. Okay. So the function reciprocal, the reciprocal r is, x goes to 1 over r is partial, since 1 over 0 is not well-defined real number. Make sense to you? Okay. Because it is infinity, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So even in numerical examples, Oh, mean numerical functions, there could be functions that can be partial functions. Okay. Okay, don't confuse with in pure mathematics, we always okay. have a function or something like that. Okay. But where it is not, because the input type and output type is also defined in the, in the case of all the functions we are learning. Do you get that? Okay, yes. The very last one, both the co-domain co and the domain has to be of the real type, real number type. Okay. So, as there is a zero is available in the real, in the co, in the in the domain input side, if you give the zero to the reciprocal function, it will try to do one over zero. Okay. Mathematically, we know what is one over zero, which is infinity. We know that that is an infinity. But infinity is not part of the real number. Do you get that? Okay, yes. That is why here the input also, the core domain is also real, the output, the input is also a real quantity. So as infinity is not available in the core domain, this reciprocal function become a partial function for us. Okay. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Now the function f domain goes to go, 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 co domain is total if and only if for each x element of domain there is an element y of c with y equals f of x. 
Okay. Because x is the input, y is the output. Okay. 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 So, yes. X is, I mean, we know that x is, is a, belongs to the domain and we are expecting the y is the element which is a element of the core domain where y is defined by the function f of x. So, for every okay. x which is a input, possible input for our, all possible inputs for the function f of x is very well defined. That is, the output is going to be y which is equal to f of x. If the y is available in the core domain, then that function is called the total function. Okay. It is just to put up in the statement. Do you get that? Because yes, sir. mathematics is all about when we try to explain them in terms of statement, can we make sense out of that? Do you get that? Okay. Because there are people, okay, maybe you, you, you need to develop yourself what kind of person you are. Because we are more used with the pure mathematics and we okay. apply the pure mathematics straight away without even making a statement or an understanding or the the qualitativeness of the or the property of the function or something like that. Do you get that? Okay. Human mind is more good at it. They can immediately solve a problem when it is mathematically like using numbers or functions or something like that. Okay. But when you try to start explaining them like a statement or something like that using terminology, like the terminology is very important because okay. le le let's say, I mean, even if you go for medicine or something like that, let's say in the fourth year or fifth year, suddenly if, if you heard the word partial function, you may not remember after four years from now. Mm. Okay. But, but, it is there in the discrete mathematics. There is something called partial function. Do you get that? Okay, yes, sir. So that is terminology is important. So if you want to communicate with somebody, or even if you want to understand what is a partial function, you need to remember that. So how we develop ourselves as a person of with the terminology, with the statement, explanation, and everything. Am I ready to? make myself to think about it and make the connection and bring out the understanding. So here the statement is not a very complicated statement. Here they say there is a function f which makes the domain goes to codomain. That is very straightforward, right? Okay, yes. Sir. And what is the difference between a partial function and a total function? Total function is if you take any element from the input side, let's call the input as a x and it belongs to the element domain. Obviously, right? Okay. okay. Yes. And if you give it to the function and that will convert the f to a f of x, if you look at the core domain and if the core domain by itself is a set, right? Yes, sir. Let's say y is the element from the core domain and if the y is available in the core domain where that y is our f of x, then the function f is a total function. Okay. It is a mapping. Do you, do you understand that? You, you need to come out of the thinking that if I know f of x, then I, I can find the answer when I know the x. Do you get that? That, that, okay. that okay. is available in our mind. But now you should start thinking about not that way. It is a, the input is a set on its own. Output is a set on its own. Do you get that? Okay. You need to give the accommodation of, take the good example, like the input are all men. Output okay. are all women. Do you get that? Okay. So that means what? If you take a function whose input is a man, output is a woman, then in the whole world, there are, I mean, probably there are 4 billion on one side and 4 billion on the other side. Do you get that? Okay, yes, sir. So now we have not yet defined the function, but we have defined the domain and the co-domain. Do you understand that? Okay, yes, sir. Now we yeah. take a particular function, for example, mother is a function. Is that okay? Okay, okay. Uncle. If mother is the function, then the input is a domain which is the set of all the men in the world. Okay. Okay, so you can take any one element. It could be me or your your dad or I mean, uh, you don't have a brother. Like uh, you, you, your dad has a brother, right? Uh, no. Okay, I mean, take any, any anybody, yeah, any, okay, any, okay. Any, okay. any man you know, they, okay. they, they could be the X. Do you get that? Okay. 
and if you put it into the function f which is the mother then the, there will be an answer in the codomain you will find a mother of a any man do you get that okay yes sir that means this function mother is completely defined it is totally defined okay but take the same example the domain is a man but codomain is the woman now the function is the for example a daughter daughter could be a function right okay okay yes, so if you yeah. take a man from the you take one man any any man from the whole planet earth one out of the 4 billion do you get that if you check whether they have a daughter they may not be do you get that okay okay that means only some of them may have it so that means that function daughter function is a partial function okay yeah sense to you yes sir okay so that is what uh, it is that is what written here do you get that okay so x is the element belongs to the domain y is the element belong to the codomain if that if you take a x and the function acting on that will be a f of x let's say that is our y then if y is available in the c that means the 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 function is a total function okay okay Okay, yes, the function is regarded as partial or total depends on what the domain is taken to be. So the domain of definition of a partial function f, which is d becoming a c, is the set. Now we are defining the set. Do you get that? Okay. Okay. So the d yes, prime is defined as x is an element of the domain d, such that there is y which is uh, belongs to the c with y equal to f of x now you see how we defined okay so now we are taking a a subset of the d do you get that d prime is a subset of a capital d so example a function could be the daughter as an example so what we okay. are doing, we are not taking all the men we are taking only the men who has daughter okay then it's come then it's a it become uh, a total, total function Do you yeah get? total function yes sir so now we are we are we are, so it is all depend on how we define the domain okay so if you straight away depending on because the example is so straightforward because the function itself is a daughter means we know that we are looking for every man should have a daughter means we separate out from the domain the those men who has a daughter okay okay then that means yes. the 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 daughter function will be a for that particular domain because it's a special case of a domain do you get that that is why we call yes, that sir. subset okay makes sense okay. to you large, large yes yes also the way it is written like the flower bracket or the braces you know the name there are it has two names yes yes yeah the brace or the flower bracket and how to write this x belongs to d such that the vertical line is called such that there is y element of or belongs to c with y equal to f of x okay okay yes sir we could regard f as a total function from d prime to c that makes sense right straight away yeah okay yes sir okay so it's not for d to c it is d prime to c okay one to okay so far no problem right yes sir okay, okay so with all this stuff we go for starting to the properties one by one so in the property we first go to one to one functions ah, okay. yes yes okay yes your function yes. f a a a goes to b is an injective or one to one function if and only if whenever x comma y element of a and f of x equal to f of y then x is equal to y, equal to y. yeah so one to one means if you if if your function take one input maps to only one output and the, the the output can be for only a one particular input do you get that okay yes sir. so both the input and output are 
are connected. So you cannot have another input which gives the same output also. That is not one to one. Okay. For example, numerically, I mean, it is a bad way of teaching, but uh, I, I go for that because I am more pure mathematics guy, uh, even though I, I can understand the discrete mathematics and everything, but take a squaring function. Do you get that? Okay. The squaring function, you can take plus two if you give it, the answer is a four. Minus two also is a four. Yes, sir. That is not a one-to-one -one function. Do you understand that? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So that is what it is. <laughs> so... Okay. Here that is put up in a statement like a function f which a, a goes to a, a becoming b is an injective or one to one function if and only if whenever x comma y element of the a. Okay, so we are taking two inputs, two different inputs. One is a x and another is a y. Do you get that? Okay, yes. Sir. And f of x is equal to f of y. That means then x is equal to y. Okay. Yes, sir. So actually, we even though we say we take two different inputs, actually they have to be the same input. Yeah. Okay, that is what yeah. it is a statement. Yeah, yeah. The statement of it, it may look complicating, but it is how the it's actually, mathematics yeah. is all written and uh, we, we should be ready to understand that and uh, accept that. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. So, alternatively, f is injective whenever x is not equal to y implies f of x is not equal to f of x. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Same outputs implies same inputs. Hmm. Equivalently, different inputs implies different outputs. Okay. Okay. So, as an example, or I mean, uh, a real number goes to real number given by f of x equal to 1 minus 2x is injective. It, all the linear functions are injective. Do you get that? Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, graphically also, you know, if you draw a straight line, x and y or something like that, if you, if you take any x, go and meet the straight line, then it will touch the straight line only at one point. Okay. Yes. 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 So if you have a x, then the y value will be unique. Some other x cannot have that y value. Okay. Yes, sir. Huh? Is that okay? Yes, sir. Okay. So that is injective. So one-to-one -one function. But g is a function. Real goes to real given by x square is not injective. That way I just explained, right? If you take yes, a positive, positive and negative value of the same ma magnitude, then the output will be the same. That cannot be a one-to-one -one function. So this is because f of x equal to f of y implies 1 minus 2x is equal to 1 minus 2y implies minus 2x equal to minus 2y implies x is equal to y. You see how we proved it. The yes, sir. first example is a injective because we take the definition which is 1 minus 2x equal to 1 minus 2y because we are trying to equate two different outputs to be a same out output, then automatically it says that the input must be the same. This is one way to prove that. Make sense to you? Uh, yes, sir. But minus 2 is not equal to 2. That we know straight away. In the input side, if you take two different inputs, but the squaring function g of 2 will be equal to g of minus 2, which is a 4. That is the reason g function is not an injective function. Okay. Yes, sir. Are you okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. One, two function uh, injection. Here we take the, the qualitative type. Given an alphabet alpha, alphabet alpha, alpha is the short form of the, okay. the, the type itself because the real real number we write capital R, the natural okay. number again, like that alpha uh, quantity, we write it as alpha. So the function okay which reverse alpha goes to alpha is that okay okay yes sir this is one to one but the length function which is actually alpha goes to n because if you if you give a yeah a length like suppose four letter means exactly exactly yeah so the if you if you give the 
full let the string it will count to the number of characters in there and give the number okay. that is what the meaning of the length okay okay yes sir it's not because you could have different words of the same yeah. length right so so that is a question they post why but they put it into our thought process is that okay okay yes sir. okay so we know why that is okay yes yes different strings can have the same number of characters okay now surjection so injection is okay for you are you clear with that yes yes sir the okay, next property is surjection so the range of f now you have the word range okay <laughs> okay so you are clear with the domain and the codomain right yes yes sir so the range of function f where domain goes to codomain is defined as f of x is a element of careful is a codomain and x such that x is a element of domain okay 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 so now they have to be present so the range is a subset of the codomain okay yes sir so do you remember the total fraction we I mean, total function and the partial function right yes sir there we separate out a subset of the domain itself to make the function completely defined okay d prime do you remember the definition for the d prime d prime is the x belongs to the 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 domain such that y is f of x which is always a element of element. our codomain okay Yes, sir. Okay, that is yeah, but yeah, for the understanding of we separated out only where the f of x is defined for the function. Okay, yes, sir. Okay, but here it is different. Here, here this is a range which is a subset of the codomain. Okay. Okay, so we now look from the output point of view. so you can say that in the previous case for the total function and the partial function where we looked from the domain point of view only those inputs from the domain which has the output we separated them out okay yes sir but now we are separating the codomain do you get that okay okay so that is what the range is so now be careful is not only separating the 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 codomain the output but that has to be present in the input do you get that yes okay for example um like the men is the input and output is the women okay for example okay yeah. yes okay let's say the uh not that easy we are because the 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 dot all the daughters are women do you get that okay yes uncle okay that we know output side if you look for the daughters they are all women so they definitely the the any girl there is a father yeah okay but now we are looking for but not all fathers will have daughters yes makes sense to you yes 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 or all men may not have the daughters okay so from the from the output side from the women side all women are daughters one way or the other okay okay but we are taking so that that is a, a kind of let, let's see whether there is an example here okay if the range equals the codomain we call the function surjective or on to yes okay so that means what the mother could be the good example here yeah okay completely every every man will have a mother yes okay so it maps the domain on to the codomain so okay. exactly yes. every, every man you will find a mother for a man okay okay do you get yes, that yes yes so one to one to one function 
property. Injection is different. Surjection is different. Okay. Yes, sir. So we first define a new terminology range. Okay. So the range is a subset of the codomain. Do you get that? Yes, sir. So we are going to take only those elements of the codomain where they have a they will form an output for the all the input. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Because be, be, be free with the mind, okay? Don't think that the domain and the co-domain is, is not because of the function. Do you get that? Yes, sir. Function is the one we may define later. We may try to understand or define later. Depending on that, what is the domain and the co-domain, that will form the property of the function. <laughs> are you... Okay. Are you getting that? Yes, sir. Okay, because in the pure mathematics, we we are straight away into the function. And yes, we, don't, we, we don't define separately the domain, co-domain and everything because the function is straight away available for us. Do you get that? Okay, yes. Sir. Which, is, which is always totally defined for any input because we know the function itself, right? Yes, sir. But in, the, in, in a generic case, including the discrete mathematics under the uh, the the pure mathematics, whatever it is, don't restrict the thought process as the function is defining the domain or the co-domain. That is wrong. Okay, yes, I do. So the domain, we can define the domain. We can say that the whole universe is the domain. That is okay. But you cannot have a single function to uh, explain everything what is happening in the universe. Do you get that? Yes, sir. Okay, so be free with the mind that there may be a domain and there may be a co-domain. Now we yes. start looking into, depending on our function, we check whether every element of the domain has a co-domain or not. Yes. Sir. If they have, and if one is exactly mapping to the one explicit to one on the core domain then we call that function as a one to one function okay is that okay yes sir. okay but that is what is the injection is surjection is first of all we define a terminology which is a range which is defined in such a way the f of x is a element of a co-domain, of course, and all those f of x, the x is available in the domain. Okay. Yes, sir. So here, the, here the range definition itself, you need to be very clear with. We start def defining from the, from the output side. Do you get that? Yes, sir. So the function f of x is an element of codomain. Of course, the output is here itself is the f of x. Do you get that? Yes, sir. So we can say that, but we are putting a condition that range is a subset of the codomain where the f of x is available in the codomain, but the x must be available in the domain. Okay. Still, your OK is not coming up. Yes, out. yes, Uncle. Yes. Sir. Okay, with that, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So yes, then sir. that is a, a separate subset of the core domain. So that is what is called the range. You're okay with that? Okay. Yes, Uncle. Okay. So if the range equals the core domain, so that means what? It is not a subset. Let, let's say every element in the core domain as a domain element. Okay. Then we yeah. call that function as a surjective or onto. Oh. Okay. So okay. it maps yes, the domain onto the codomain. Okay. Okay. So okay. That's, that's the function f. A goes to B is surjective if and only if, if every element of B is the image under f of some element in A. Okay. 
okay so the so the codomain elements with respect to the function there should be a input available for that is it okay 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 as an example if r goes to r real quantity goes to real quantity given by f of x a linear function 1 minus 2x is surjective do you get that okay yes sir but g r goes to r given by g of x x square is not surjective okay okay, okay i okay so that that is this is this is because if a is an element of r okay okay then a is actually equal to f of x right okay yes sir then x is actually equal to minus half of 1 minus a okay you know have, have you got that right the, the this is this is explaining both the function the one is which is surjective and another mm. is not surjective for the surjective case for the linear function we take a element a okay, okay. yes okay okay so okay hey, take any any element any real number quantity okay. okay then we are saying that because r maps to r right yes sir okay then a is a function of f of x right okay yes sir okay so then we can write that a is actually equal to 1 minus 2x because f of x is 1 minus 2x. Do you, do you see that? Yes, sir. Okay, here. Do you see my cursor? Yes, sir. Yeah. So you take the a equal to f of x, use the a in place of f of x, a is equal to 1 minus 2x. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Understood, understood. Ah, yes, when sir. We are yeah, right, yeah. You get yeah. like... Okay, okay. X is equal to minus half of 1 minus. Yes, sir. Ah, yeah. Yes, sir. So this looks like exactly the same function. Do you get that? Yeah. Okay. Linear. Yes, sir. Yeah. So input and output, they are both related by a linear function. Okay. That is why it is surjective. It is on to. Yes. But okay. g of x is not equal to minus 1 for every x element of r. Okay. Because once you see the output, they will be always positive numbers. You cannot have a negative number. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. So that is why it is not on to. Okay. So if you take an output example, a codomain uh, like a 4, then it can be because of minus 2 or a plus 2. Okay. So it is not on to only one. It is okay, going yes. to of them. You get that? Yes, sir. Either one of them, though. So that is why the property this is not subjective. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Okay, I will. I will send uh, this material to you. Uh, okay. WhatsApp and uh, okay. have a look. But it takes a, a a different thought process and accommodation in our mindset. Okay. Okay. So I I don't know. You have to develop that. Okay. Okay. We yes, will keep continuing looking into all these things one by one until it covers all the syllabus for you. Okay. 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 Yes. Okay. 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 See you yes. next time. Thank you.